Good evening, everyone. This is Stacy on Make Me Feel It Radio. This is your host for tonight and every Sunday night. Make Me Feel It Radio every Sunday night from 7 to 9 p.m. Now, tonight we have an awesome show, an awesome show. We are going to talk about legal things. We are going to talk about probation. We are going to talk about the do's and the don'ts when it comes to law enforcement, police, when you get pulled over. We're going to touch on a few bases of things to do and things not to do. So we are going to get this show started with a special guest, and I have to wait for him to call in, um, but we have two special guests Two special guests tonight. The first one I will announce once he is on the show, and the second one will be actually someone who is a probation officer, and you know this, is show, this show is always about resources, so I will definitely have resources available to you at the end of the show. And you know how I am. I'm going to make sure they are free resources for you because that's what I'm here for. So we are going to get this party started, but I want to get all the particulars out of the way first. So what we're going to do first, uh, we have to do a commercial break because I don't want to have to do it later and interrupt the show. So we're going to do our commercial break now and get it out of the way, and that way we can start our show and continue on. So here's your commercial break. We're getting it out of the way now, and then we'll continue on with the show. Welcome to the Family Healing Circle, where we heal the mind, body, and soul. Join us every Monday for Totally Whole. Your money right Tuesdays on Money Matters with Chastity A. Wells. This show is the tool you need to develop a healthy relationship with your money and financial legacy. Every Thursday is a treat as we mix it up. On the first Thursday of the month, it's Total Empowerment with Angela Hart, where beauty and strength is enhanced inside and out. The second Thursday of the month is Relationship Talk on One Love, One Connection, One Up with Reverends Arlene Cahet and Harvey L. Bell as they give you practical advice for creating a spiritual union to have the relationship you want. Call in with your relationship questions. Calling all brothers on the third Thursday of the month, it's the Sacred Masculine Show with Reverend Jamel Gilliam. It's a show for spiritual brothers and the women who love them. When there is a fourth Thursday in the month, we have the Healing Paradigm with Reverend Arlene Cahet, healing the mind, body, and spirit through changing viewpoints. Every Friday, let's talk love, sex, and nutrition with sexual wellness coach Bondria Walters and sex enthusiast Nakia Lott, the hottest sexual health and wellness and nutrition show around. This is for the grown and sexy. Listen at your own risk. If you don't know, now you know. The Family Healing Circle on Blog Talk Radio, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. It's the best in entertainment, education, and talk radio. All right, guys, we are back for the evening. You are in with your host, Stacey, at Make Me Feel It Radio. And tonight we will have two special guests. Our special guests will be on soon. I am currently in touch with one of them, and we are trying to get some patch through. Now, for everyone, that is, I'm out of breath, y'all, because I've been running up and down. I'm sorry. But for everyone that's listening tonight, 
what we are going to do. Since I cannot, for some reason, get you guys um, to type in your comments or questions through the link, we're working on it, though. We're going to get it up and running pretty soon. Um, if you go to my page, which is me and B Ferguson, that's M as in Mary E and A and D as in David, B as in boy, last name Ferguson, F as in Frank, E-R-G-U-S-O-N, I will absolutely accept your friend request if you're not already my friend, but I will allow you to post your comments and or questions on Facebook, and then I'll answer them on the show. So, again, if you would like, if the for the, all the people that's listening online, me and B Ferguson, send me a phone request if you're not already my friend, and I will accept it. And then you can send me your questions through Facebook. I will ask them on the line and on um, on the air, and then I'll answer your question on it. Yeah, I know. I'm doing a million things right now, y'all. Please forgive me. Oh, here though. Trying to make sure you guys have the best show possible. Now, tonight's guest, the first guest, is a lawyer, a very prominent lawyer here in Baltimore. And we are going to pick his brain with everything that he knows. We are going to get into an in depth conversation and we're going to try to find out everything that we need to know as citizens, the do's and don'ts, what he thinks about the things that's going on in the world, who he thinks is a good candidate for a mayor, or we can't really ask him that. We won't ask him who he's going to vote for, but we will pick his brain to see what he thinks about all of the candidates. Um, the second half of the show, we will have someone else that's in the criminal justice system where we will be able to ask some questions and get some feedback. So this show is for everyone, but I want us to start embracing everyone. So the drug dealers that's on your corner, that's somebody's son. That's somebody's cousin. That's somebody's brother. Everybody needs love. So the next time you talk to them, say hi. I listen to this girl, Stacy on the radio. Listen to her. She might give you some something that can help you out because everybody needs some kind of guidance. And do you think those people are really out there selling drugs because that's what they want to do? Most of them are out there doing that because they don't think in their mind they have any other means. Um, so we want to reach out to them. We want to let them know that there are resources available to help you get a job, to further your education, so that they can get off the street. Some people think that that's their only way out. That's their only way of making money. So we have to not always look down on people, not always snub our nose at people, not always look at them out there. They selling drugs. They doing this. They doing that. For some people, that's the only way they eat. That's the only way they have a roof over their head. Yes, there are some just knuckleheads and they don't have nothing else to do or they think that's the cool life. But for a lot of them, that's not what they want to do or where they want to be. So we have to embrace everyone in every situation. I am, for all the people that listening, call somebody and tell them, call them. For everyone that's listening or listening from your computer, call someone and say, hey, listen to Stacey Show today. I need, this is not your regular talk show. This is a movement. I want to appeal to everyone, every person that's out there. I have something that will help you in some kind of way. But the only way they're going to know about it is that we spread the word. I need you to call somebody and tell them to call somebody and then tell them to call somebody so everybody can be on one accord. So we can all, this is a movement. I'm trying to take over the world. I'm not going to talk about foolishness. I'm talking about stuff that's going to help you in some way, shape, or form. So please, if you know someone who's not listening, or if you, if you don't even know if they're listening or not, 
call someone. Say, hey, listen to Stacey's show. I'll send you the link, or here's the number. Now, we're going to keep going with the show. Um, some mental reminders, mental reminder um, for the spring cleanup that starts April, and please forgive me if I'm mistaken on a date, but through the city is April the 23rd. Um, please remember to call 311 to register your neighborhood or to register if you just want to clean up in front of your house. The city will provide trash cans and trash bags. Please, we have to clean up our neighborhood. We have to be responsible. We have to take responsibility for the things that we can take responsibility for and make out just outside, outside of your home. Look a little better. When you're when your house is nice and neat and clean, when you get home, you feel relaxed. You feel at peace. You feel at ease. We want our outside to be the same way. So, please, everyone, in the city of Baltimore, 311, spring cleanup day. It's a Saturday. If you're not working, if you're home, get out. Clean up your neighborhood or clean up just in front of your house. So if everybody just cleans up in front of their house, the whole neighborhood will be clean. So we're going to keep the show going. Going to talk about lawyer stuff. Still waiting for my special guest to call in. And I do not want to mess up the surprise. So I am adamantly waiting. And he's on a limited time, so we won't take up a lot of his time. Or he won't be on here for the whole show. But the fact that he even said okay that he'll be on this show is awesome to me. And I can't wait for you guys to hear who it is. Um, second thing is, if you would like to advertise on the show, if you would like to be a sponsor on the show, please email me. No, that's not my email address. That's Facebook. Email address is Stacy L Ferguson seven seven at gmail dot com. That's Stacy S T A C Y. The letter L is in Larry Ferguson F E R G U S O N at gmail dot com. Please, please, please. If you would like to be, if you would like to advertise, if you would like to be a sponsor of the show, please send me an email. I'm just starting out, so these are the best prices you can get. Now, don't try act funny now. And then when I blow up, you're going to be like, yeah, I should have advertised or been a sponsor on her show back then when the prices was cheap, because you know how we did. All right, guys. The next thing I want to say is next Sunday, which is Easter, I will not have a special guest for that Sunday, and the show will only be one hour, because I'm going to do a inspirational talk um and it will not be christian muslim buddhist there will not be a religion involved because i want everyone to be included but it'll be something that'll be inspiration for you for the next week i want to encourage everyone i want to motivate everyone and i want to inspire everyone to just be a better you so next sunday on Easter, we're only going to do a one-hour show, and it will be an inspirational speech from me. I am a life coach, so there are two people who need a life coach, people who are trying to get over something and people who are trying to get to something. So whatever people <laughs> you fall into, if you need a life coach, someone that's going to guide you in the right direction, someone who is going to give you an action plan, and someone who is going to stick by you through that plan until you get to where you need to be, feel free to send me an email. It's Stacy L Ferguson seven seven at gmail dot com. Everyone needs guidance. Everyone needs a cheerleader. A life coach is supposed to be someone that's in your corner that's cheering for you day in, day out, no matter what. They are supposed to encourage you, and they are supposed to set a path so that you are clear of your goals and clear on how to achieve those goals, and you actually see a vision 
of those goals and where you want to be. Now, as a life coach, like I said, I will be your cheerleader. I will be there for you. I will encourage you. I will inspire you. I will hold your torch for you when you get tired. When you get tired and you say, look, Stacey, I can't do this for more, I'm going to hold your torch. I'm going to keep motivating you. I'm going to keep inspiring you, and I'm going to keep pushing you. And then when I see you're ready, I'm going to give you your torch back, and we're going to make it to the goal line. So wherever you are in life, if you want to get to that next stop, if you need help getting there and you don't see how you're going to get to the next stop, email me. It's Stacy L. Ferguson 77 at gmail.com. Everyone needs a life coach. I have a life coach. So there are some goals that I want to get to. There are some things that I want to do. There is, I have a plan for the next two years, and I need someone who's going to encourage me to say, keep going. Okay, maybe you shouldn't go this route. Maybe you should try this route. Or, okay, you're doing good, but, hey, I think you can do better if you do this, that, and the other. That's the job of a life coach. So nobody's trying to fix you. All we're trying to do is get you to understand some things. If it, if you are stuck or if you are in a place where you can't get to the next step, then that life coach is supposed to listen to you, work, take the emotion out of the situation, deal with the facts, and encourage you to get from where you are to where you want to be. So, again, if you need a life coach, please email me. If you want to advertise or be a sponsor of the show, please email me. Um, I'm still waiting for my special guests to come on. I'm not sure where they are, but we are, we are going to keep the show rolling, and we are going to hope that they will call in soon. Have you guys been thinking about who you're going to hope for? Have you really took a, well, not last week, but the week before last, I challenged everyone to do some research. Find out who's running. Find out what you like about who's running or what you don't like about who's running. Find out if the person that you thought you liked do they stand for all the things that you need them to stand for? What did they stand for the last time they ran? What are the things that they said yes or no to the last time? Because a lot of people flip flop day in and day out. One day, you know, we think we agree on this topic. Well, if you come back and check with us next month, don't really agree on this topic. Because after we did a little research, we realized, uh, that's not really what I thought it was going to be. So just like we change our mind, politicians change their mind also. But we need to know what you think now before I vote for you. And a lot of things that we don't consider within voting, yes, one of the top things and when we go to vote, and um, we looking at the next mayor, the crime. Yes, that's a given. We have a lot of crime here in Baltimore City. We have a lot of crime everywhere. So, you know, we want to know what they think about crime. We want to know what they think about police and the body cameras. We want to know what they think about how the police interact with the citizens of the city. We want to know what they think about money and the budget and taxes. We want to know what they think about that. But some other things we want to know or know what they think is women's health, women's services. So there is a big thing in Capitol Hill, the Senate, the White House about Planned Parenthood. Because they, the media wants you to think that the Planned Parenthood is only here for one thing, and that's for abortion. When in actuality... Planned Parenthood, abortion is one of the lowest things that they do. The top things that they do is birth control, um, sex health, or 
um, GYN visits. So abortion is not on their top agenda. So when they talk about getting rid of Planned Parenthood, they also talking about getting rid of the other smaller practices like um, joint family planning, healthy teens. Um, they have one office on, in West Baltimore, one office in East Baltimore. But those practices, no, although they don't do abortions, they do handle birth control. They do handle GYN visits. They do handle. They see a myriad of people, whether it's um, our LGBTQ commu- community, whether it's transgender or what have you. They offer a lot of resources and they offer a lot of services that we need to take into consideration. If those places like Planned Parenthood and those other places go out of businesses, out of business, there are a lot of people who will not be able to afford going to a regular doctor's office. For people who have no insurance or low insurance, this is critical for them. So make sure the person that you are voting for are not just tackling the, the questions that is in the forefront of your mind. Do some research and find out what they really think about all these things that affect us and our community. Now, I'm still waiting for our special guest. We'll see how this works out today. But we want to keep the party going. Um, the next thing I would like to talk about is I'm just going to start talking, and then hopefully our special guest will be on with us soon, and then we can reiterate what I thought or what I said, whether it was right or whether it was wrong or whether they agree or do not agree. Um, since our topic today was about probation, for all our people who are on probation or have been on probation, like, what do you think about the process? Again, if you log on to Facebook, if you send me questions through Facebook, I will be glad to either answer them or pose the question on the show. Me and B Ferguson is my Facebook um, handle or name. Don't feel free to contact me on Facebook. Um, what are what are the things that you thought could be better if you have ever been on probation or if you are on probation now? What do you think about the process? What do you think about the probation officers? Are they friendly? Are they not friendly? Are they helpful? Do they provide resources for you? If you have problems or if you're struggling in a certain area, what do you think about that? The other question is, when you get pulled over by the police, what are the things that you should and should not do? Now, first of all, respect goes a long way. And even though I know there's a lot of people out there who don't like the police or don't really care too much for the police, you have to respect them. So if you are pulled over, start the conversation out the way you would want it to go. Don't be on the defense of why you pull me over. What's wrong with you? What did I do? No. Yes, officer. How may I help you? Whatever the situation may be, you might come out better if you approach it, if you approach the situation with a positive attitude. Not all police are bad police. Not all police are just they don't have anything else to do but pull you over. Most of the time, you you did something. You were speeding. I don't, I've never actually been pulled over by. Well, I'm, I can't say that. One time I was pulled over by the police for no reason at all, and I had to file a complaint. But that was years ago, and hopefully we got into a better place with police officers. So think about those things. Again, if you have questions, you have concerns, feel free to call into the show. If you don't have the number, it's 646 929 Zero six three zero. If you're listening online, if you go to my page, it's me and B Ferguson. There is a link. You can follow the link to listen to the show. If you're listening to the show, whether it's online or on your phone or someone else, tell them to listen. 
we this is a movement. I want to be able to touch everyone. So keeping the show going. I think my special guest stuck me out. I don't know what happened. Keep going on with some topics for discussion. We had a little blink out for a minute. I apologize. Okay, guys, remember, I am also the engineer for the show and the host. So sometimes we might blink out. Sometimes I don't know it's a technical problem, but we're going to keep the show going. Don't stop listening. Keep going. Keep listening because all these things will be figured out as I go along. So I will be growing with you guys. So as I'm growing, you guys are growing. As I'm learning more about being an engineer and running my own show, I will be laughing at myself and keeping and keeping the show going as long as I possibly can. So right now, I don't see anyone who has any questions. I don't see anyone who has requested me to be their friend on Facebook. I don't have my special guest here. So, looks like we're going to have tonight. That makes for an even better show because then you get to listen to me run my mouth and talk about all the things that I really want to talk about. And because we don't have a guest, then I can keep talking. Talking. That's my life. I talk to everybody. Um, Some things that I am getting ready to start doing, some endeavors. I am getting ready to start um, posting some videos to my channel on YouTube. They will be inspirational and motivational messages or videos that I think will help people um, just improve your everyday life. It's the small things that count. It's the small things that make us feel good about ourselves that will also make other people feel good about us. So you have to choose to have a good day. That's a choice that you make. Everybody has something going on in their lives. I have a million things going on in my life. But every day I wake up, every day I look at myself in the mirror, I say, you are beautiful, you are smart, you are kind. I start my day off with that every day. Because those things I have to instill within myself, because the way you treat yourself dictates the way other people treat you. So, no, I don't walk around conceited or cocky or if my head held high or snubbing people or looking down at people, but I'm very confident in myself, confident in myself. When I speak to people, I speak with passion, I speak with concern, and I talk to everyone. You never know. It's the people that you snub your nose at are the people that probably have a better outlook on life and probably live a, a more peaceful life than you think because they're not concerned with all the things that we concern ourselves with. So self-esteem starts with you. It starts with yourself. Start your day on a good note. Start your day happy. And if you are in a place where you cannot start your day happy, that's a problem. You need someone to talk to, whether it's a life coach, whether it's a psychiatrist, whether it's a counselor, those are the things that you need to talk to someone about because nobody has control over your mind but you. And if there is someone that has control over your mind, that's a problem. You have to take matters in your own hands. And whatever situation you are in, sometimes you have to be your own rescue. Sometimes you have to rescue yourself. Sometimes there is not someone else out there that can rescue you. There are times where you look to your spouse, you look to your your kids, you look to your parents, you look to your significant other because you're looking to them to make you happy. But happiness starts with you. Stop looking on the outside that should make you happy. Happiness comes within. So you have to be happy with the person you are. Whether you fat, whether you skinny, whether you tall, whether you short, whether you dark skin, whether you light skin, whether one leg longer than the other, whether your teeth crooked, 
whether you had nappy, whatever it is, you have to rescue yourself. You have to throw yourself a lifeline. You have to be confident in yourself. The image, the the spirit, the perception of you is the only thing that should count in your life. What other people think of, about you is none of your business. Don't concern yourself with other people think of you. If you are living a life where you are happy, you help people, you welcome positivity and the people that surround you, then don't worry about what other people think. If I walked around worried about what everybody else thought, I would be a wreck. That is a hard job to keep worrying about, oh, well, I hope this person don't think this. Oh, well, if I say this, then I hope this person don't think this. You can't control what other people think. You can't control other people's perception. All you can control is what you put out on the earth. So if you know that your intentions are good, if you know that the things that you do and say, you have the right intention, don't worry about everything else. The right intention will lead you to the right path and everything will fall into place. So, I say all of that, and I hope it inspires someone. I hope it motivates someone. I hope it gets you to think. I know this show is not structured today because I have no structure. I talk about what's passionate to me, and I hope these things are passionate to you. This is Make Me Feel It Radio. This is your host, Stacey. I am on Sunday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. If you have topics that you want me to discuss, if you have ideas, if you are um, if you are in a crossroad and you need me to have a special guest on that could kind of shed some light on a situation that I have not touched on, well, this is only my fourth or fifth, I think it's my fourth show. So, oh, I have a lot of tricks up my sleeve. But for right now, if there is something that is dear to you that you are passionate about, if you are struggling with something and you need a radio show to be able to talk about those topics, please email me. I am here for you. I am the community. I am part of the community. I am your voice. I am here for you. So whatever you're struggling with, whatever you need clarity on, whatever you want to know a little bit more about, please don't hesitate to email me. It's Stacey L. Ferguson 77 at gmail.com. We will tackle whatever. And we're going to go ahead and because I don't need anyone to kind of beat around the bush with me. I need someone that's going to be frank be up front, be honest, and let me know what I need to know and give me some resources so that I can get where I need to be. You know I'm all about resources. There are so many resources available out here, and a lot of them are free that nobody knows about. So if there's something that's, that you're passionate about, there's about a million other people that's passionate also, but they haven't said anything. So be that voice for the Whatever it is, send me an email. We'll talk about it on the show. I'll give you some resources. And as a community, we'll handle it together. You're never alone. You always have me. So we're going to keep going. I have to do another commercial break. I know. I was trying to get them all out of the way in the beginning of the show, but I guess that didn't work. So. We are going to do another commercial break, and we are going to be right back after these words from the sponsor. Welcome to the Family Healing Circle, where we heal the mind, body, and soul. Join us every Monday for Totally Whole with Dr. Rosemary Cook and Pastor Bridget. 
as they discuss issues related to spirituality and mental health with emphasis on wholeness of mind, body, and spirit. Get your money right Tuesdays on Money Matters with Chastity A. Wells. This show is the tool you need to develop a healthy relationship with your money and financial legacy. Every Thursday is a treat as we mix it up. On the first Thursday of the month, it's Total Empowerment with Angela Hart, where beauty and strength is enhanced inside and out. The second Thursday of the month is Relationship Talk on One Love, One Connection, One Up with Reverends Arlene Cahet and Harvey L. Bailey as they give you practical advice for creating a spiritual union to have the relationship you want. Call in with your relationship questions. Calling all brothers on the third Thursday of the month, it's the Sacred Masculine Show with Reverend Jamel Gilliam. It's a show for spiritual brothers and the women who love them. When there is a fourth Thursday in the month, we have the Healing Paradigm with Reverend Arlene Cahet healing the mind, body, and spirit through changing viewpoints. Every Friday, let's talk love, sex, and nutrition with sexual wellness coach Bondria Walters and sex enthusiast Zakia Lana, the hottest sexual health and wellness and nutrition show around. This is for the grown and sexy. Listen at your own risk. If you don't know, now you know. The Family Healing Circle on Blog Talk Radio, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. It's the best in entertainment, education, and talk radio. And we are back, and we have our right now, so I'm going to bring him on the line, and you will be able to talk to ask questions and hear my, me asking all the questions that I want to know about. So tonight's show, Make Me Feel It Radio, you're on the line with your host, Stacy. We are on every Sunday from 7 to 9 p.m. Mr. Pettit, are you here with us? I'm with you, Stacy, and glad to be with you. Thank you. No, thank you for honoring me with your presence. This has have been, I've been so excited, and you can probably tell because I gave you the wrong number. That was typing too fast. So I <laughs> apologize right. for that, <laughs> but I'm so glad you agreed to be on the show with me tonight. This is an honor to me. I am so grateful because it's not every day that you can actually sit and have a conversation with someone who's so wise, who's been through a lot, who's seen a lot. Who can impart that wisdom on us? So I thank you from the bottom of my heart for agreeing to be on the show. So I will let you do your in, your formal introduction, however you would like um, now, and then I'll just start asking you some questions that I just wanted to know about you. Well, Stace, let me say to you that I've been a practicing attorney for probably longer than you are old. And, uh <laughs> And uh, 43 of those years have been in the practice of law uh, here in in Maryland and Baltimore. And uh, three years before that, I was with the National Office of the Small Business Administration, uh, uh, the National uh, Litigation Office. And before that, I was at Howard Law School and Howard undergrad. I'm originally from the Baltimore area, having uh, originally grown up in uh, Turner Station before my family moved to Aberdeen, Maryland, and uh, and so therefore I have a lifelong Baltimore history and and connections. And as you know, Stace, I have a book out entitled Under Color of Law, uh, which goes through a lot of the contemporary things that are taking place uh, in America today, and it's a lot of Maryland history there, and uh, examination, also a lot of my history of moving through the civil rights uh, uh, movement and being involved therein in my family, and uh, uh, the, the transitions that we made and the f- battles that we fought uh, in terms of the civil rights movement. So, having said that, uh, let me open myself to questions that you or your audience uh, that I'm delighted to be with may have. 
now, now that you've opened up the floor, so I've had some questions that since I met you, I was like, okay, please, Lord, please let him be on the show because there's so many questions I have. And once you say yes, oh, my mind just went into overload. So we're going to start. I know you are limited on time, so feel free to cut me off when you need to and say, okay, Stacey, it's been real, but I got to go. Um, okay. So first thing, first things first. As living, as a person that's kind of lived through the civil rights movement, I hear a lot of people say, like, I'm so tired of seeing these movies about slaves, or I'm so tired of seeing these movies and all they talk about is how we were slaves and how we were beat or how we were treated. What do you say about those people? Are those films still needed these days and times? Or do you, well, what do you think our film should be about? Well, you made you raise a very interesting point, uh, Stacy, and because I, I've watched the movies uh, sometimes ever since uh, the making of Roots and probably some others before that, uh, I have a very difficult time watching those movies. Uh, it's it's very painful for me and very emotional for me because. Uh, those time periods are not too far removed. And uh, I watch them for educational purposes, and I think they're still needed uh, for educational purposes because one of the things that we have to realize uh, that a lot of people we believe because a couple people here and there, some might have good jobs and good educations and uh, good economic prosperity, a lot of folks think that the struggle is over and the civil rights movement uh, is something of the past. And that's one of the things that I talk about in my book, that we have to be very uh, ever conscious uh, that this is a very young nation. And the mm -hmm. politics of this nation can change very, very suddenly. And we have found, for example, uh, that the Supreme Court has been moving back uh, and backwards and to the right for the last 40, 50 years, stripping and taking away a lot of the things that we died for as a people and as activists and civil rights um, movers and shakers and bakers. And so we have mm -hmm. to be very, very aware of what's taking place in America, especially as we watch this current uh, day political cl uh, climate. And so even though it pains me to watch those movies, uh, mm -hmm. Birth of a Nation, uh, roots and on and on and on and, and I cringe when I see the activities of slavery and what have you but those things are very real and we need to be reminded just like other people and other religious or racial groups are always uh, stay aware of, for example the Jewish people in terms of the Holocaust they never forget it okay. and I don't think uh -huh. we can ever put our past uh, aside and so therefore in answer to your question I think it's something that we have to stay on top of it and even though it's painful uh we still have to observe and be aware and be reminded uh that this history of this nation in terms of african american has been a very painful uh and short period of time but a very painful period of time absolutely thank you thank you thank you um now i do not have a structure for my questions i don't have like a avenue that i'm going down these are questions that were just dear to me, that were passionate to me, and all, I just wanted answers to them, or I just wanted you to be able to explain them to me so that I have a better understanding. When we go Sounds to vote, good to me. When we go to vote, there is, we also have to vote for judges. Now, for the common citizen, or the everyday citizen, how do we know what judges we should be voting for? There's, well, like... For the mayor, they sorry. have campaigns. I'm sorry. For the mayor, they have campaigns or they get out or they have TV advertisements where they, you kind of can at least get a feel for them. But for judges, we get nothing. So how do we know who to vote for if I would just, okay, they're Democrats, so I'll vote for them? Well, let me say this. In Maryland, we have what is called the sitting judges, and uh, they run as a ticket. Uh, and I think that there's seven up for re-election uh, now. And uh, people who are in the legal community, a lot of us, uh, like myself, we endorse the sitting judges. 
And the reason we endorse the sitting judges is because uh, they have been vetted by the uh, the appointment process, and uh, those are judges, some of them, like Judge Hurd, have uh, been there for 16, 17 years, and she, her term expired, and she's running for re-election. So some of the new judges that were appointed, uh, like Judge Jones, a uh, member of Bethel AME, and uh, Judge Freeman, and uh, Judge Panis, and certain and and uh, uh, others, uh, they are in fact running as a ticket. And so, what I ask the community to do is look for the ticket with the sitting judges. And when you go in to vote, as I understand it, uh, they will be listed on the ballot like the first six judges. And so uh, you should get something uh, with the sitting judge ticket on it and vote the sitting judges. And uh, the reason this came about, if I may, Stacy, because uh, historically uh, we didn't have the opportunity to have as many African-American or female judges uh, because we had governors that would not appoint us. And so mm-hmm. that's why the election process was important. Uh, for judges, even though in many cases they wanted to do away with it, but it was necessary to keep the the appointment process honest because the appointing okay. authorities, which were the governors, uh, they knew that if they didn't include African Americans and other ethnic uh, minorities and women particularly, uh, that they would have to face that at the polls. In fact, one of our famous uh, Marylanders here uh, was one of the ones that uh, – uh, one running against the sitting judges when the sitting judges was all white, all white tickets, and that was Billy Murphy. Uh, we also elected okay. uh, Judge uh, Johnson uh, when he challenged the sitting judge tickets. But since then, we've had very progressive governors in terms of appointments of judges, not maybe not mm-hmm. across the board, but uh, Bob Ehrlich was excellent in terms of appointing African-American and female judges, and for that matter, uh, so was Martin O'Malley. And so, therefore, the the ticket is very, very diverse. I think it's three women, three men, two African-American females, uh, and uh, one uh, 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 Hispanic female, and so it's a it's a Judge Karen. That's who I was trying to think of. She's the Hispanic on the ticket. So we have a very diverse, experienced, qualified ticket, and I find no reason for the voters to to stray from voting for the sitting judges. So to be on the safe side, everybody should start, try to get a piece of literature with the sitting judges as they're listed. But I'm saying to your audience right now that they're listed in such an order. Uh, that you can go straight down the list from Judge Heard through the first six, and that, to my understanding, will cover the sitting judge ticket. Awesome. And I always welcome the education because that's how we learn what we should be doing and what we should not be doing through education. So thanks so much for educating us and giving us a little something to think about when we do go vote. Um, next question is, So I was kind of talking about this before you came on, and I just want to know, as a lawyer, what your opinion is. The do's and don'ts for when we get pulled over by the police. I know the police get a bad rap, but I encourage people that not all police are bad police. There are some police who are actually doing their job, doing a very good job, and are here for our community. So where are the top, let's say, three things that you should absolutely not do when you get pulled over by the police? Well, let me say this to you, Stacey. You know, I do a lot of litigation uh, in terms of bad cops, but there are a lot Mm -hmm. of good police officers, and we uh, could not live in our city and our environment without the police. Uh, So they're very Mm -hmm. necessary, and you, you made a very good point. Most of them are good police officers. Uh, and uh, we have to understand that. But to answer your question directly, because I have uh, children, uh, a grandchild is 18 and, and a, mm-hmm. grand, a son who is now 40-some, and my daughter uh, is in her early 40s. And I tell them all the time, because especially my daughter is mouthy and my, my son is mouthy, <laughs> and I tell them, <laughs> you know, that when I get stopped, and I want them to do the same things that I would do, when I get stopped, is yes, officer, to the questions I'm asked, or no, officer, mm-hmm. to the questions I'm asked. Mm-hmm. I don't make any sudden movements, 
if I if I have to get my license or something out of the glove compartment or what have you, I ask the officer uh, for permission before I reach uh, down to mm-hmm. the console or before I reach to the glove compartment, and I put my hands on the steering wheel, and uh, mm-hmm. you know I get my 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 driver's license out, I get my registration out, and uh, I don't uh, look the, he the officer is doing his job, number one. But number two, they have the gun, they have the badge, they have the Mm -hmm. the taser, they have the Mm -hmm. handcuffs, they got the authority under color of law, which is the same as the title of my book, (laughs) because that's what they're acting under. (laughs) So it's a no-win situation to do anything else, like what's your badge number or or uh, this or that. If you can get the badge number and memorize it, that's fine. But don't be pulling out any cell phones. Don't be uh, trying to get a badge number because all it's going to do is create a confrontational situation, and you cannot win. And so if you, if you feel that you're being treated unjustly, then that's something for you to complain about to a lawyer or to hire a police authority after the fact, not while you're out there on the street. It's a no-win situation as we see unfolding in America every day with all the young African Americans who are being killed, unfortunately, by police and and um, overreaction by the police. Go to the White House. So President Obama has to decide who he's going to appoint. Now, my view on this is and this is just my view, and then you can tell me what you think, what you don't think, whether you agree or whether you don't agree. I don't think he should appoint an African-American. I think he should appoint someone else because I want someone else to take all the beating up, all the headache, all the ambushes, all the everything that they're going to throw because President Obama was the person that chose them and get that out of the way and then save a a qualified African American person for the next go around. What do you think? Well, well, you're very, very astute, and you might be, you might be, in fact, uh, predicting what President uh, or in line with what President Obama has done, and that was. So there's a, point, a strategy. Uh, yeah, that appears to be the strategy. Now, I don't totally agree with you, Stacey, because. I believe that this judge, uh, Judge Garland from the Court of Appeals, uh, Chief Judge of the Court of Appeals in the District of Columbia, I don't believe he's going to be approved anyway. And so my thinking mm-hmm. was, uh, you know, that the president has been president going on eight years. And I would mm-hmm. say to the president right now, your biggest supporting block of voters were African Americans. We got you in the White House first time, we got mm-hmm. you in the White House second time, and you have done a lot with the with the Affordable Care Act, uh, with uh, Mm -hmm. uh, changing and and reforming the justice system and, uh, you know, with the economy and what have you. But I think you owe the African-American community a black nomination, an African-American nomination. And that would have been, I think, because we don't have any representation on the court at this point in time. I don't consider Clarence Thomas to be a representative of the African-American community. So I think we deserved one. Now, the politics of that, here's why I disagree mm-hmm. with you, states, because I believe if we weren't going to get the confirmation of Judge Garland anyway, and I would be surprised mm-hmm. if we do. I don't think we're going to. Why not throw down the gauntlet and have made a nomination that would, in fact, stimulate your voting base for the upcoming Democratic candidate, whoever that might be, whether it's Hillary Clinton or whether it's Bernie Sanders, you would have established a a motivation and an inspiration for African Americans uh, to come to the polls like they did uh, in the election of Mr. Obama twice. In other words, you, you, mm-hmm. you would have you would have maybe created a, uh, a argumentative situation and an inflammatory situation, but you would have also excited your base because I believe the Supreme Court is one of the most or the most important thing that can be decided right now by the voters in terms of electing a president that's going to give uh, a, us a progressive and uh, um, uh, uh, active Supreme Court. And so you had the opportunity, Mr. Obama, to throw down and, and set the – 
the line of demarcation to create the stimulation so African Americans throughout this nation would have something uh, to fight for in terms of the upcoming election, and it would have given the Democratic candidates, in my opinion, the only ones that are going to give us a progressive court, uh, would have given uh-huh. them the the stimulation, the ability to go to the to the electorate and say, this is why you got to get fired up, because the court is four to four right now, conservatives and progressives, and this gives us an opportunity uh, for the progressives to capture the court and keep it for the next generation, next 50 years, and maintain some of the things that the court had given us, the Congress had given us, and the president had given uh-huh. us, such as the Voting Rights Act, such as affirmative action, uh, such as uh, women's rights, such as Title VII, all of these things the current court was rolling back and has been Uh rolling back since Reagan. And so for Uh those reasons, I would have said, hey, I'm not going to get a confirmation anyway, but let me throw down the gauntlet for the next Democratic presidential candidate. That's where where I sort of disagree with you on that, Stacey. I think we might as well have gone to war right now. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that is quite all right that is quite, that is where a conversation is supposed to be even if you don't agree as adults even if you don't agree with someone you have an opinion they have an opinion and even if you don't agree with their opinion it doesn't mean we're supposed to argue tooth and nail and fight it out it's supposed to mean we're going to keep debating about it until we agree to disagree at the end exactly right Okay, and you actually talked about two things that would lead me into my next two questions. Next question would be, what do you really think about Bernie Sanders? By Kim, well, oh, my God, he's so, okay, I don't know if I'm even supposed to say this. He's so old. Well, that, that's true. He's 73 or 74 years old. Right. Uh, but, but remember, you know, 70s are not what they used to be, uh, Stacey. You're right. And, uh, you know, we've had, uh, uh, not a good example probably, but Reagan was an elder uh, president, yeah. and he, he did two terms, although I'm not sure how his health was in the second term. But I think mm-hmm. uh, Bernie Sanders has been very good for the election process because what mm-hmm. he made Hillary do and the Clintons do he made them discuss things that they may not have discussed if he hadn't have been yeah, in the right. campaign. They discussed yeah, right. Black Lives Matter. They had to discuss charge. Uh-huh. They had to discuss the, the disparity of sentencing. They had to discuss uh, locking all the young black men up, which came from her husband's administration. Now, remember that, the, the uh, omnibus crime bill where they came in with all this the so-called war on drugs, which turned out to be a war on us with mandatory sentences and uh, disparate sentences in terms of white kids getting probation for cocaine and, and black kids getting 10 years for crack. You know, how did you justify all of that? So to answer your question, I think Bernie Sanders made her put certain things on the agenda and made it a mm-hmm. national discussion which not would not have been if he had not been pressing her, especially going into uh, uh, the southern states where you had a heavy black population. So she had to discuss these things before she might, you know, she might have moved very, very conservatively because she was a conservative in a way. She was a Democratic conservative, but she might have moved right over there with the conservative Republicans uh, if Bernie had not been pushing her back to the left. So okay. it's a good thing, in my opinion. And, uh, okay. you know, whether he can win or not, but he, he has framed the conversation. Good advice. Good advice. Now, a question that I have had a debate with some of my coworkers, Freddie Gray. My, my opinion is everyone was so up and on. Everyone everyone wanted to boycott, we wanted to march, we wanted to riot for Freddie Gray. But we didn't do anything for the two older people of Walbrook Junction who got shot by someone of the same race who was just out shooting. We didn't do anything. There was no riot. There was no anything. What do you think about that? 
Well, you're talking about two different things, I think, Stace. One, you're talking about uh, the the visualization because of uh, technology. We were able to see some of the police abuse uh, that was mm-hmm. taking place that we had heretofore not seen on live living color, color television. And a lot of our okay. people just didn't believe that those things were taking place. And that's mm-hmm. sort of a separate issue, in my opinion, uh, from the black-on-black situation in terms of crime, which is just as heinous. Uh, but mm-hmm. one of them is more heinous. Both of them are disastrous, and I think we need to move to correct both situations at the same time. But mm-hmm. the heinous part about uh, police activities was that the police had no accountability. There was no sanction. Uh, mm-hmm. There was no law uh, uh, being applied to them. And therefore, mm-hmm. their ability to take lives uh, was something that they did not have to answer for, which was horrendous when you consider that they are constitutionally mandated to protect us, not to kill us. And okay. uh, acting under the color and power of law, uh, what you saw throughout this nation as technology has progressed and everybody has a cell phone now and everybody can video something, you're seeing all of the killings that have been taking place mm-hmm. for years and nobody would believe right. it. And, you know, lawyers like myself and others that were going into court, people were like, oh, it couldn't happen that way, uh, Mr. President. No, mm-hmm. you know, no way. Now they're seeing it. Now, on the mm-hmm. other side of the coin, uh, what One of the things that we are blessed about right now uh, is that after Freddie Gray, you know, I'm very religious, and by act of God, uh, our mm-hmm. election cycle is coinciding with the president, presidential election. That okay. wasn't supposed to be mm-hmm. because uh, they had to move. They moved the mayoralty election to coincide with that, but normally it would be four years, now it's five. And so we haven't – the nation is looking at Baltimore now. And between the Congress and the president and between uh, private sector, they have an opportunity to do something uh, to help the people that have been disenfranchised, unemployed, kept and held in poverty, uh, the new Mm -hmm. mayoralty candidates. They have the opportunity to address this. Not only uh, would they not have, but that stimulation came from Freddie Gray because Freddie Gray turned the national spotlight on Baltimore. And so we're uh-huh. getting ready to elect a mayor and a new city council uh, along with a, a, a U.S. senator and as well as Congress, and everybody can now begin to realistically, uh, politically see what and say and and determine for the voters what they're going to do to alleviate the, the mass poverty and disenfranchisement and the unemployment and the and the a disastrous narcotic situation with dope and guns mm-hmm. in our community mm-hmm. because there are no jobs, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to have the opportunity now to to listen what the politicians are saying and who has a plan uh, mm-hmm. to, in fact, uh, solve some of these problems. Where before this was all swept under the rug, but now through the Almighty, not only did uh, unfortunately, we lost Freddie Gray, but Freddie Gray opened the spotlight. And right on top mm-hmm. of that, we're coming into a citywide, statewide, and national election where we can demand from our politicians uh, that they fix a broken educational system, that they fix a, a broken justice system, uh, that they, they fix a, a broken disparate system, uh, that what are you going to do, Mr. or Mrs. Politician, and this is what the voters are, are going to demand. And hopefully as a political entity, uh, we will make them accountable and elect the people uh, that are going to move to resolve both of the situations that you raised at the same time. We as a nation, we can do that. Before you came on, I was also talking to my listeners about this. That Yes, we know when we vote for a mayor, we have to look at the crime, the crime that's going on in the city. We have to look at the taxes. So we're going to be choosing a mayor candidate that says the right thing or say what we want to hear about crime, about taxes, and about um, police and the body cameras. What are the things that we should also be looking at or listening for that's not at the forefront of our memory, that's not things that they usually talk about but that we need to keep 
somewhere in our minds so that we can be listening out for us. Or if we need to do some research, what are some other lower lying topics that's not in the forefront that we should be looking for? Well, let me say this to you, Stacey. I'm not too sure that I can identify uh, because there's so many collateral issues, but I think one of the things mm-hmm. uh, that we should really be looking at the persons who are running uh, is their past history if they have been in public service. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. some of the people have not been in public service, so we have to judge them on terms of what they've accomplished to benefit the community uh, as private citizens. But I think another thing we can look for is in terms of all of these candidates, one of the things that I say, follow the money. Where, When mm-hmm. you see all these candidates in terms of where, it, where is their money coming from? Uh, is their money coming from special interests uh, that we're going to end up with a mayor who's going to really be picking up the phone and responding to somebody who lives in Howard County or Anne Arundel County rather than the citizens of Baltimore because their campaign mm-hmm. money uh, came from sources outside of the city. So I think one of the most important things we can look at is what these people, particularly those who were public servants, what they did in the past and where their mm-hmm. money's coming from as to whether they're going to be able to operate in the interests of the citizens of Baltimore versus the interests of the rich, powerful contributors. Just like that's one of the thing that, things that Bernie Sanders is talking about on the national issue. You know, mm-hmm. where does this money come coming from? I mean, who's paying you uh, $2 million on the national scene, to, I mean $200,000 to give a speech? Or in, on the local scene in Baltimore, uh, you know, we see now I'm, one of the things that I got interested in over the weekend was looking again at, at the Baltimore Gas and Electric that wants to raise mm-hmm. the rates. I mean, with the water bill and the Baltimore Gas and Electric, every time I open my mm-hmm. mail, I get sick. It's ridiculous. And here they're going to turn Absolutely. around and, and uh, gas and electric and ask for more money, and they've, they've gotten the, height, the the rates have gotten hiked up every other year or every year. And so I would mm-hmm. be interesting as to, you know, where, if some of these candidates, whether or not they're going to be responding to Baltimore Gas and Electric rather than to the population, just using that as an example. And so mm-hmm. I think we really have to follow the money uh, to see uh, who is – is really going to be an out because everybody's going to deny that. Well, I took the money, but that doesn't mm-hmm. mean that I'm going to respond to mm-hmm. them. But hey, I've been in politics. The people that, right. that if you take give the you money, the money you are the people respond. that you answer the phone calls for mm-hmm. and that you respond to. And uh, you know, we need at this point in time uh, people that are going to respond to the citizens of Baltimore. Now, I'm prejudiced because I have a couple candidates that I like, and and at this point in time, I haven't finalized which one I'm going with. But I like I like Sheila Dixon because of her past history, and I like Carl mm-hmm. Stokes because he's always been a fighter as a congress. I mean, as a councilman. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, but uh, those are, those are the things that I would look at. Uh, to help voters uh, make up their minds. All right. Okay, so I know you said you can only stay with us for a little while, so I don't want to go over my time, and I always want to be respectful of your time. I want to say thank you. If you want to stay on, that's perfectly fine with me, but if you have to bail out now, I just wanted to say thank you, and I wanted to show my appreciation for you even considering being on the show with me today. Well, Stace, I was going to hold to 8.30, but I can leave now. Or, 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 or no, no, now no. would be a good time. Unless you have another okay. question, I could stay with you another five or ten minutes, and, and I have another appointment at uh, 9 o'clock, but I have a half now to get there. Um, No, because I don't want you to extend yourself, and I want you to be safe and not have to rush. So, Oh, if right. you would love, if you would love to be on the show again, we would always welcome you. So I'll be keeping in touch with you, and I'm sure we'll be running across each other soon again. Um, so we will. I'll hold on my other questions for the next time you're on the show. Well, I, I enjoyed being with you, and I uh, enjoyed talking to your audience, and it's been very educational for me uh, because you asked some very dynamite and dynamic questions. Uh, oh, and so you. it's really been a pleasure. And so it appears as though, you know, your 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 questions and all were excellent and well-based, and, 
and to, I think would be very helpful or going to be very helpful uh, uh, to the community. So I thank you very much for giving me the opportunity and look to talk with you uh, much more in the future and look to coming back. I look forward to coming back on your show. And thank you, oh, thank that you, would thank be you. Awesome. It's been my pleasure. You are so welcome. You are so welcome. And thank you again. Have a good evening right. and please travel safely. We'll be talking soon. Thank you. Night night. Bye bye. Good night. And you are on the air with your host Stacy for the night. We're on Make Me Feel It Radio. We are here with you every Sunday from seven to nine PM. And we're going to keep the show going. We have our next special guest to um, come on the show and grace us with their presence. And I'll let her introduce herself when she comes on. So thank you, thank you, thank you guys for tuning in. If you're listening online, thank you for listening. Call someone. Tell them they missed a good show, but we still got 45 minutes left. They need to call in or they need to be listening from their computer. So I'm getting ready to bring on our next special guest. Miss mm-hmm. Keisha, how are you? Can I call you Keisha? Is that appropriate? <laughs> yes, please. Okay, great. So, Miss Keisha, and we just going to keep it on a first name basis for tonight because um, we're when our list is all up in the business. So, we have Miss Keisha on the line. She works in the criminal justice system. And so we're going to pick your brain and we're going to ask you some questions and we're just going to see what you think about certain things. Um, so okay. is there anything you would like to say first if you want to introduce yourself? You don't have to tell us where you work and all the details of anything. If you have a side business, if you do something on the side, feel free. This is your platform free advertisement. Put it out there. So what you got for it? <laughs> well, first of all, I'm like, ah, uh, how you had me coming up behind? <laughs> right? <laughs> that great speaker. <laughs> so what happened was, right, I had <laughs> met him a couple months ago, and it was before the show actually started, and I was like, please, Mr. Pettit, you know, I'm young, I'm coming up, this will be my first blog talk show, Please, if you could be on my show, and maybe like great. last month, right? Last month he was well. When I told him, he was like, "Well, sure, take my information." But you know, when you know, kind of, you know, famous people. And I'm not famous, but you know, famous people say, "Okay, sure," and they give you that number. I would be thinking, mm-hmm. "Are they All really right. going to do it?" So I kind of was like, "Okay," he said, "Yeah," but I don't want to get too pop yet. So then. Yeah. I sent him an email, and I explained the show, the basis, the premises, blah, 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 blah. He never responded. So I was like, all right, well, I got there goes that. He called me yesterday. No, what's the day? Sunday. He called me Friday and said, okay, I can be on your show this Sunday. I couldn't say, well, no, I already somebody. I was like, oh, yeah, absolutely. We're going to fit you in. We're going to fit you in. I couldn't give up that opportunity. So, yes, you did go behind Mr. Adel White Paddock. But that was the kind of formal part of the show. And now is the informal part because you know how we do. We're going to chop it up. No, that was so, great. He, anything he, you... he did very wonderful. Yes, he did. And I was nervous, girl. I was like, oh, <laughs> Lord, what am I going to say? You know, when you get in front of people, then you're supposed to act like you got some fish. You can't remember what you're supposed That's to right. act. Dignified. All right, so any, right. <laughs> any side businesses you got going on you want the people to know about? Give them your information. Tell them what you do. Uh, um, yes, well, I do have a few side businesses. I am a travel agent um, with Shania Travels. I also am a... And how can they get in touch with you for a travel agent? Um, it's on Facebook. I'm, it's Shanae Travels. It's, what is it, www.facebook.com, X slash Shanae, S-H-A-N-A-I-R, Travels, with an S. Okay. Um, my craft business, I crochet and knit, um, also on Facebook, and Instagram. Um, on Facebook, I'm facebook.com backslash Keisha 
with a K, K E S H A, crochets with a K, K R O C H E T S, and knits, K N I T S. Um, oh, right. That's what I'm talking about. We got to get it in. <laughs> I tell people all the right. time we need seven streams of income. If you can That's get right. up to seven streams of income, you're rich. Right, I'm already at my and third. If you my can fourth. find <laughs> exactly, if you can find something that you're good at, decide, do it, do it. What you, what you, if you're good at it, people are gonna pay you for something That's that right. you're good at and that you kind of just do just because you want to do it. Right, seven streams of income. So you got to keep that going. Seven streams of income. Got to get it out That's there. Right. All right, now. That's right. I just now. read that, too. I just read that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. See, make me feel it ready, yo. I'm trying to get your mind right and get your money right. That's all we're trying to do here. This is not your mama's talk radio show. This is a movement. All right, come on, people. Get with it. All right, now, questions. What is, for people that's on probation, for people who have ever been on probation, What's the stuff that like get on and in that in that world? What are the what's the top three things that get on your nerves the most? <laughs> well, seeing as though I work with kids, um, the top three things that get on my nerves is um most times some of the parents and sad to say, um, some of our parents definitely need to step up. A lot of these kids have the issues that they have because of these parents. Um, it's not just the fact that it's a single mom. You know, dads, they need to step up. It's not just the fact that moms are single. It, you know, it's just you. you mm-hmm. it, it's mm-hmm. like their mentality. Um, All right. So what is it that we should be teaching our kids that we're not teaching them? I'm not going to because say Because I assume teaching. that some parents don't know. That's why they don't teach their kids. I'm not going to say that it's something they should be teaching them. I, I'm going to say that there's things that they more so should be showing them. Um, and, and, you know, okay. showing is also a, a way of teaching. But it's like, for instance, um, you know, these parents, if you're not setting a good example for your kids, and nobody's perfect. You don't have to be the perfect parent. There's no, no way mm-hmm. nobody is the perfect parent. But mm-hmm. if you're not, if you're letting them believe that it's okay, even at a young age, that it's okay to pick on people or to bully people or anything of that nature, then you're not being a good example for them. If you're mm-hmm. letting them feel like it's okay to, at a young age, curse and, and shake their tail and twerk, you know, that's not setting a good example for them because 10 years down, 10, ten years down mm-hmm. the line, then you're sitting there wondering why, you know, they're out of hand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, mm-hmm. you know, it's sad to say when agencies like mine get involved, it's the parents kind of step back. They take a, a seat back and say, okay, y'all got mm-hmm. Y'all going to do mm-hmm. it. I, every mm-hmm. chance that I get, I don't allow them to do that. You know, right. I, I, I've, I've been doing this for 15 years, and I see quite a bit of, you know, parents stepping back and saying, you know, y'all got them, y'all can do it. No, your responsibility mm-hmm. is your responsibility, and I'm not stepping in to take your responsibility. Right, right. Good point, and good a lot, point. Right. A lot of parents think that that's what we're here for, and we're not. Mm-hmm. My, um, probation, um, child and family service, or, or, or what is it, DS, uh, D, what is it, DDSS, mm-hmm, Department mm-hmm, of Social mm-hmm. Services. Yeah. All of that, they think that we're supposed to step in and just handle everything, and that's not how it works. And right, so parents, we need you to be responsible. That's right. And you have to, you have something no one else can teach your child. Some things exactly. you have to be the example for them so that they understand. I remember being a child. And I remember my mother said to me, we were in church, and I can remember this clear as day. We were in church, and my mother told me to stop doing something. And I don't even remember what I was doing, but it was something I probably had no business doing. I remember her saying, stop doing that. And I can remember me saying, yeah, okay, and I kept doing it. This other lady came and was like, 
Now, then you hear your mother tell you stop doing that. You got to stop yeah. or you get in trouble. And I stop doing it. My mother beat my ass because she told me if I tell you to stop doing something and you don't stop doing it, how dare you let somebody else tell you to stop doing it and then you stop? What the hell? Right. Exactly. Exactly. Right. And you know what? That's a good thing. <laughs> Yes, yes, it was, because I remember when my mother told me stop, you got to stop, because if somebody else tell you stop, you stop, oh, it's on. My mother was like that. Right, because, so, you know, that's just, and that's the same thing that I tell the parents, my parents, listen, don't leave it, don't call me telling me, you know, uh-huh. your child staying out past curfew, your child not getting up to go to school. Don't call me like you telling on them, because then you're giving me uh-huh. your authority. Mhm. Uh-huh. Right. You know, don't call right. me. And you 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 can call me and tell me that after you've done what you're supposed to do to correct the situation. Mm-hmm. Don't call mm-hmm. me to be the one to correct it for you because then you're giving up your control, your authority. Right. And I tell them that right. all the time. You know, some people will just step in and just do and just you know they they don't really. I try to I try to make the parent aware without being disrespectful, make them aware mm-hmm. of what they're doing that's that's wrong or could be right. wrong in the situation. Mhm. Mhm. So take us for all the people who's ne- who's never been on probation or who's never had to deal with a Keisha or who's never been introduced to Keisha. Like what is the process for probation? When it comes to our children like, do they have to be locked up before and then they get probation? Or is it something that a school can recommend a child see a probation officer? Like, how does that work? How do they get to you? Well, first they have, they have to be arrested to be placed on probation or come in contact with probation. Okay. All right. Now... So then that poses a problem from the beginning if we talking about children because, okay, so then, okay, next question. Do you find that there is a, the majority of the people you see are because the parents are, like, on drugs? Because, like, I hear a lot of people saying when you see rowdy kids, like, uh-huh, their mother probably a crackhead. Well, they prob- their parents probably on drugs. Is that the majority of the kids you see, or is it could be two family homes and just the parents just not standing up for themselves or standing up and demanding a certain level of respect? Well, the I think that, um, well, let me go back to your first question when you asked how do a kid come in contact with probation. Mm-hmm. What The rest of that would be, it's a lot of services that probation refer kids to that the kid mm-hmm. doesn't have to be on probation to receive. Okay, okay. So it's, it's it's a lot of services out here that parents don't know about, and a lot and a lot of times, you know, the the way the city is run and things like that, and the way the agencies are run. A lot of times, I feel as though they need to be stepping out more to to make mm-hmm. the parents aware, to make the families aware mm-hmm. of what opportunities they have. So that okay. they intervene before a kid is arrested. Mhm. Are you here? That's me? one thing. Oh, okay. hello. Yeah, That's I think your phone thing. blinked out a little bit. Can you hear me? Yeah, that's better. Okay. What was the second question again? The second question is: Do the majority of the kids come from like their parents are on drugs? Or is it a substantial amount of two-parent homes where the parents are not on drugs, they just don't demand that their kids do certain things or not do certain things? I think it's a little bit of both. Most times it's a family. I mean, I'm going to say most. A lot of times it's more Uh so a a single parent um, situation. Uh Uh And... The parent may not necessarily be on drugs. 
it's and it's 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 crazy to say, or you know, it's kind of shocking. But a lot of times, most of the families aren't the parents aren't on drugs. You would wow. think that they are. Mhm. But most times they aren't. It's just the fact that they're working okay. and trying to. They make right. sometimes they're working mm-hmm. and trying to make a living and trying to provide, mm-hmm. and the kids just get sucked up with the wrong crowd, and then mm-hmm. they want to fit mm-hmm. in. Okay. Okay. Now that is kind of shocking because I I I guess I would have never thought about it like that. Um. So I guess for all our parents that's out there and working. We have to pay more attention to our children and what they're doing and keep better tabs on them and what they're doing and what they're not doing. Um, right. So, hey, yeah, that's something something to think about because I wouldn't have thought that. Next question, because I don't want to keep you. Well, how long can you stay with us? Can you stay for the next 30 minutes or are you on a time frame? No, I'm fine. Okay, cool. All right, so next question is, what? How do people find out what resources are available if they see that their child, or like, is there a website they can go to? Is there a phone number they can call? Do they need to call, or do they need to go through their counselor at school? So if I if I see that my child might be changing, they kind of starting to be a little mouthy, or they starting to get in trouble a little bit more at school, and I don't really think that I'm getting through to them. What are some resources mm-hmm. that's available, or how is it a website? Is it a you know somebody can go and look on on a web, or do I go through my school through the council, or how does that work? Mm-hmm. Some sometimes sometimes you can go to the school counselors. Um, I'm not I'm not going to talk about <laughs> the school mm-hmm. system much because. <laughs> It's right. not going to go That's there. That's a whole other topic. That's a whole other two-hour show. Right. I'm just not going to go there. But sometimes you can find that some services within the school. Most of the schools have social workers in the schools, and they have um, resources that they are supposed to provide to the families. Or, um, mm-hmm. you know, that's if they're not, a lot of times they're not just going to reach out to you. You have to reach out to them. Okay. Um, okay. Also, um, a lot of people don't know that they can contact their insurance provider. Um what? Because most most of the right most of the services that are provided go through your insurance, your medical insurance. So okay. that's how the program you gotta, is paid for. Yeah, teach me because I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, that's how that's how they get paid for, and um. So a lot of times you can contact them and tell them, explain to them what's going on with your child, and they mm-hmm. they are supposed to provide you with the resources as well that you could use that they, you know, are, are willing to pay for, mm-hmm. um, especially if you have medical assistance or Medicaid mm-hmm. or something like that, especially if okay. you have those kind of programs. The more private, the private insurance, you know, that's a little hard. It's like pill and teeth mm-hmm. with them to mm-hmm. get them to tell you about stuff because they don't want to pay for anything. So that's okay. Some understandable, understandable. And so, you okay. know, like that's why I say it's a lot of things that's out there that you wouldn't really know about because it's hard mm-hmm. to get the funding and mm-hmm. um, it's a lot of mentoring programs that's out. You know, uh, a friend of mine, he's trying to start up a mentoring program now also in West Baltimore. Um, he went to city also. He went to city. His name is Kenny, Kenny Carter. That's right. Um, put his information out there. Um, if if you're listening to this show and you need resources, by all means, please send me an email, Stacy L Ferguson seven seven at gmail dot com. I can get you in contact with Keisha, or I can get you in contact with. Anyone that you see on my show or anyone that you hear on my show, I can get you in contact with someone who can at least give you a path to the right place where you need to go. So, and yes, I failed to mention this, and please forgive me. My Keisha 
and they followed City Night that we were in the same class of 95, and you know 95 is the superior class to everyone else's because That's we have special right. people in our class, and we have a special bond, and we all keep it in a family, and I love my class. I love our functions. I know I'm not able to get out and get to all of them, but I'm always there in spirit. So, yes, Keisha is a fellow City Knight. We appreciate you coming on the show, and we see that we have one caller who has a question. So you ready for some questions, Keisha? Okay. All right. Don't sound so excited, Keisha. <laughs> um. <laughs> This is Stacy on Make Me Feel It Ready, yo. You reached your host for tonight. Do you have a question for us? Is it me? Yes. yes it's it's you your mother. mother. Oh Lord. I need to I need to learn your number by heart. Yes, mother, how no. may I help you? <laughs> yes, you can help me. I just want to say to Keisha, you're doing a fantabulous job. Right. And I understand what you're saying about the moms who uh, starts at home. I'm an old mom, so it starts at home. You've got to do what you've got to do. You can't let your children run over you because you're still the mom. If they get to be 100 and you're still living, you're still the mom. So you're doing a fantastic job. This was a great show show because I learned a lot of things uh, from Dwight Pettit, uh, listening to that part of the show listening to Keisha, and listening to my child said, she heard just what I said. I love you. <laughs> I love you too, Mother dear. Thank you for calling. All right, wait a minute. Aunt Cheryl wants to say something. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Come on, Aunt Cheryl. What you got to say now? Come on. Okay, I wanted to say this. <laughs> I wanted to yeah. say, just like what you said, it started home. They got to learn their moves. They got to learn respect. Right. They got to learn um, 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 trying to um, be like, heal, um, you know, respect people. You know, we okay. we are older, mm-hmm. but they got to learn how to respect people. And then we okay. have to listen to them more. Okay, I'm in a school system. I got from elementary, and I got children in pre-K that's telling us, trying to tell us what to do. But my thing is, I'm a, a custodian. <laughs> but I just take them as my children. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I'm saying that, yes, it starts from home. And somebody got to teach them. I'm going to write a book. Somebody got to teach them the <laughs> rules and standards of respect and learning how to do things out in the world with these other people. If they do wrong, you don't do wrong. You do right. Mm-hmm. That's what you do. Mm-hmm. Your job is to go to school and get an education, and listen to what mom says, and then after that, you take it from there on your career. You understand? But don't let nobody change your mind and what you want to do in life. I'm finished. (laughs) We thank you. We thank you so much for calling in and asking your question or commenting. We appreciate it. You're very welcome. I love you, love you, mom. I love you, Aunt Cheryl. Thanks, Ma. Thanks, Aunt Cheryl. (laughs) (laughs) Keisha, I got the learn cookie number by heart, so I know when he's going to call it in. (laughs) (laughs) But, yes, they actually, they raised some very important concerns. As parents, as parents of small children, I have an 8-year-old and I have a 5-year-old. I also have a 12-year-old. Respect comes from home. My children know to say yes. They know to say no. They know when an adult is talking to them, they should not be talking back. They should, if you don't agree with the adult is saying, then you need to find another adult where you can explain or someone that can talk to you or that you feel comfortable talking to, that you can explain, well, this is what I was saying and they didn't understand what I was saying or they didn't give me a chance to say this, that, and the other. Respect comes from home. So you have to learn how to give respect as well as get respect. I don't expect a child to be standing in my face telling me what they are or are not going to do. Not in my house. That don't work like that. 
Exactly. So to prevent yeah, them from ever seeing you, exactly. If to prevent them from ever seeing you, I got to do some things at home. So if that means I need to whoop ass at home, whoop ass it is. That's right. So now the next question is: Is are there are there any programs where um? Like, people in the criminal justice system go out to schools. Now, I remember back in the day, there used to be, like, officer-friendly programs. Then they used to come to my school and elementary school just so that they, a police officer is visible in the school, interacting with the children. So even if my parents at home don't like police or they always saying, fuck the police, if I see a police in school and I know that they cool, then that might not... You know, I might hear what my parents are saying at home, but if I see this police every day and I know all police are not like that, then that might change my thoughts. Do you do right. we still have those those like officer friendly programs in school? I I don't think that they're as prevalent as they used to be. Definitely when we were in school coming up elementary middle school, you know, they had the dare mm-hmm. program and things like right, that. Right, right. I remember the officers used to come because my school was near train tracks, so the officer used to come into school and give us a, 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 a um, you know, like a like a training, like a mm-hmm. day of yeah, right, telling right. us how dangerous the train tracks were and right. all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't think that they do that anymore, and I don't think that those programs get the funding that they used to get anymore um, okay. because you know we don't have the leadership like with then those days and mm-hmm. it okay. just seems to me like it became we need to... less of a priority. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. I apologize for cutting you off. I'll be talking. I'll be trying to get my point across. I'll be trying to say it before <laughs> I forget what I was going to say. Um, something we need to look into as a community. Maybe those are things that we need to propose to the people that's running for office mayor, judges, what have you. When we see people that's running for stuff and we see them at our, in our community, those are questions we need to be asking. What have those programs, the DARE program, the Office of Friendly program, what happened to those programs? Those are the programs we need for our children, and we need to start earlier elementary school so that we can kind of train them in the path that we want them to take if we start early enough. We can't, I'm not going to say we can't, there's always someone who will benefit from those services once they get older in like high school, but if we start early, then maybe we can catch them before they ever get to Miss Keisha, who going to not take all that shit from them. That's right, because I'm telling you, I'm a mean people. <laughs> I don't mean no harm, and I tell my kids, I'm going like, to be nice when you're doing what you're supposed to do, but if not, I'm going to lock you up because I ain't going to let you get die on me. That's not going to happen. That's, That's right. Sad. That's sad to say. That's what's going on mm-hmm. with these kids today. They're dying. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, that's sad. That's it sad. Is. So it's like, that's, that's, the, that's how you got to kind of like, Shake them up, like let them know mm-hmm. they don't think it's mm-hmm. happening. You know, they see right. their friends done, and they still don't think mm-hmm. it's happening. You know, they don't think it's going to happen to them. And, and that's I was what most say of that. the problem is. Mm-hmm. And that's what the most, the majority of the problem is. These, you know, these kids don't really take a lot of things seriously. They don't think that mm-hmm. you know that life is serious. Right. And that's right. the I was, Mm-hmm. And everything again till it happened to you. Everything funny again till it happened to you. And it ain't funny no more. We exactly. try to get before it gets to that. So all my parents that's listening, take heed to your children. Find out what they're doing. So I understand everybody has to make a living. I work during the day, eight hours. And when I get off of work, I go to school three days a week. And I'm not getting home till 11.30 at night. I have a mm-hmm. show on Sundays. I do have, yesterday I was doing nine hours. So I'm, when I say I understand you have to make a living, but I don't mm-hmm. know where my kids at. 
I know okay. always know what they're doing, and I'm not just leaving them to fend for themselves. Even if you have to find somebody in the neighborhood, if you have to leave them home, find somebody in your neighborhood that you trust. Find a a, a coworker that you trust. But keep tabs on my child and, find, and make sure they're not out here doing no crazy stuff. And if they are, you better call me. That's we right. are a community. Back in the day when we were outside playing, it was a lady on my block named Miss Fisher. We nosy Miss because. Outside playing and came out on the street. Somebody dropped trash and didn't put it in the trash can. Somebody was cussing. Somebody was out there doing chairs. Your mother knew about it when she came home from work. <laughs> we are not a community. We it's just like those bad kids down the street, and then you got to deal with the mother who don't want you to say anything to the. We have to do better. We have to come together as a community because it takes a village to raise your kids. That's right. That's absolutely right. And it, we got past that, but we need to get back to that, you know. They yes, want to sit there. That, yes, that little stop center thing that went too far. <laughs> now, oh. if, you're, if I oh. see your kid doing something they ain't got no business doing, then I'm if sorry. I can't correct them, I'm going to tell you so you can correct yep. them. Yep. That's how it's supposed to I, be. I said this on the show last week. That stop snitching, that is only for murderers. That <laughs> only, if you are about that life, that deal, that stop snitching only applies to y'all. It does not apply to me. I'm not a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> that don't apply to me. So if I see your child outside or if I see you outside, don't I'm going to say something to you about it. I'm going to say, hey, come on, y'all, for real, cut it out. That's not what we're supposed to be doing. That's right. I'm going to say something. Now, you got to respect me enough to say, you know what, you right, I'm wrong, I apologize. Do whatever you're supposed to do and go on about your business. Everything is is not an argument. Go ahead. This is... This is one thing that that people don't understand. You know, unless somebody, unless I come at your child and I'm trying to intentionally hurt, Mm -hmm. harm, or disrespect your Mm -hmm. child, Mm -hmm. if you have a problem with me saying something or correcting your child, then you need to not show it in front of your child, especially when you know they did something wrong. You could pull me to the side. You could pull me up mm-hmm. after you done corrected your child and say, listen, mm-hmm. I understand mm-hmm. that, you know, mm-hmm. you came to me for saying what you wanted to say or whatever about what my child was doing, but I don't I don't appreciate that. So then mm-hmm. I would know. But don't right. sit there in front of your child and correct people and say, don't talk to my child, like, don't do this. When right. all the person right. need to say, stop doing that. Mm-hmm. You know, you're mm-hmm. not supposed to be doing that. Stop doing that. Mm-hmm. Because then you teach mm-hmm. your child that that was okay what I was doing because my mother going to back me up yep. while I'm doing right or wrong. Yep. Yep. And, and that's I t- how I it, talk you know. to Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm... Go ahead. No, I was going to say I talk, I talk to people. I, like, I'm the person, no matter where I go, I talk to people. And I remember somebody saying to me, oh, I could have been doing the worst thing. But if somebody had asked my mother, my mother was like, oh, no, not my child. Oh, my child mm-hmm. let me do that. Oh, no, you got. Come on, people. We got to do better. Right. You know your hey. child better than anybody else. You cannot allow them to get away with murder. And in your eyes, they ain't do no wrong. Because the judge is not going to do that. The judge is going to sit since they ass to jail. Absolutely. And the PO is going to do the same. I'm just telling you. <laughs> I, have, I don't care. Mm-hmm. I have friends, they walk around talking about, I hate her. I can't stand her. You know what? Fine. But listen, let me tell you what you need to do. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. I don't care. Mm-hmm. I don't, I'm mm-hmm. not here for you to like me. I'm not here for you to love right. me. I'm not here for you to do anything but respect me. And I'm going to respect yep. you. That's mm-hmm. it. That's all. And I'm going to get your child to where they need to be. And they not going, I'm just not going to let them fall by the wayside because exactly. you don't want to get with the program. Exactly. You know, a lot of parents think, you just want to lock them up. What is that going to do? What is that going to do? What is keeping them home steady doing what he's doing going to do? 
Right. Steady acting out, steady getting in trouble, steady getting arrested. What is that going to do? You mm-hmm. understand? Like, sometimes they need that wake-up call. They need that shake. They mm-hmm. need to be shaken up. Mm-hmm. You know, even mm-hmm. a, even a two-day, I've come across a, a plenty of kids, even a two-day stay in a detention facility straightens them right up. Yep. Not even, it don't have yep. to be a long period of time. They don't mm-hmm. do anything else after that. Oh, yep. they don't want to go back there. Mm-hmm. I don't want to go back there. I ain't trying to do that no more. Yep. They get their mind right real fast. They get their mind right quick. And that's, mm-hmm. that's all. And, then, you know, like, I have kids who I worked with years ago, and I see them in the streets, and they like, you know, they, I was their probation officer, and they'll be like, I love you, Miss John. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <That's amazing>. uh-huh. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I love you, Miss Keisha. They'd be like, because you really helped me. You know, you really, yeah. even though I didn't want to see it then, even though I didn't, I'm mad you sent me away, This, you know, uh-huh. but I got what I needed to get, and I'm uh-huh. better. I was, you know, it made me better. Yes. And you know what? What most people don't realize is, I, well, first of all, I, I deal with kids all day, every day. My full-time job, we are dealing with teenagers. Mm-hmm. So I understand that the teenagers that have the most attitudes, that have the most problems, that have the worst attitudes are the ones that need the most love. That's right. They don't, they, most teenagers, they haven't even lived a, a long enough to be pissed off about stuff. So if you That's find right. a teenager who just got a bad attitude and just mad about everything, it's because they are not getting love from where they think they should be getting it from. So if you run across them, that's your opportunity to show some love. Give them a hug. They going to cuss you out. They going to fuss and cuss, and they going to get off of me. Show them some love. That's right. Ask them, do that's they need right. anything? Ask them, do, do you right. have somebody that you can talk to? Do you have somebody who you can confide in? And be that person for them. You never know. They might actually change your life. Exactly, because I'm going to tell you, and that's why I'm going to touch you on this for this last 10 minutes, and this is a deep topic a lot of people don't want to talk about, a lot of parents don't want to talk about, but, like, these females, if you mm-hmm. ever come across any of these delinquent females, they're treacherous, but mm-hmm. they're treacherous mm-hmm. for a reason. When I say treacherous, yep. I mean tre- like, I used to have girls, and plenty of people would say, you can keep them girls. I give you, mm-hmm. I give you uh, ten boys for one girl. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Those mm-hmm. females are treacherous. But what you don't mm-hmm. understand is a lot of times, and I'm not gonna say the parents' fault, but a lot of times these girls are being touched and done stuff done mm-hmm. to them when they're children mm-hmm. that they do not mm-hmm. know how. To, they should not have to deal with, and they right. don't know how to deal with. And yep. a lot of times the parents don't want to believe it. They don't want to think that mm-hmm. something happened to these girls. Uh-huh. But that's something that even today a lot of people don't want to talk about. A lot of people right. don't want to touch on. Because it's very, uh-huh. very, very sensitive. It's a very sensitive uh-huh. topic. And uh-huh. you don't, you know, it, it, it brought me to tears a few times. Just mm-hmm. not in front of the kids, but when I go back to my office or I go back, mm-hmm. you know, somewhere out of the kids' site, that might bring me to tears because I can't, and I say all the time, I can't imagine ever having right. to go through something that they've been through. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's what we don't understand. You know, these boys out here, they might cuss these girls out, say little things because they want to dress like boys. You don't understand that mm-hmm. she's dressed like a boy because she don't want a man to find her attractive. Right. Because she right. doesn't want them to try to sneak mm-hmm. in our room and touch her at night. You mm-hmm. don't understand that. And that's right. something that you got to look at. You know, they think it's cute. They think it's, oh, what is going on? Why is she that sitting there looking like a boy? Why she did that? You got to mm-hmm. touch into the the, the 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 deeper, the root of the right. issue. The problem. Mm-hmm. Yep. Exactly. So and that's I'm... not to say that's all the kids, but that's most, a major, it's so many mm-hmm. that you would not mm-hmm. even think that yep. that stuff happens here. 
is yep. fed. And even though it's a sensitive topic, I would rather my parent talk to me about it than for me to have to talk to a total stranger about it. Like, That's we right. need our parents to be there for us when we're going through different things. Mm-hmm. How hard it, How hard do you think it would be for you to be suffering mentally and not have anybody that you can talk to when you have to tell a total stranger to feel your pain? Right. We have to be more accountable. We have to talk to our kids. We have to watch our kids and make sure they okay. Yes, everybody, I ain't going to say everybody, but a lot of people had a creepy uncle, a creepy cousin, a mm-hmm. creepy um, right. so-and-so who was in the back bedroom that everybody knew, don't go back there. You know he's crazy, or you know he's right. crazy. Nobody right. talked about it, though. Exactly. What goes on in our house stays in our house. Not when it comes to this kind of stuff. When it comes to this kind of stuff, being sexually assaulted or molested, we have to stop that old train of thought where nobody talks about it. Like, you got to get that person help as well as the person that they didn't did something to help. We can't keep right. this as an ongoing cycle. It never gets better. It just keeps worse Mm-mm. until somebody snaps. And then we got what's the guy that was molested by the daggone priest, and then he shot him. Oh yeah, that, that's what happened. Okay. Yeah. So mm-hmm. when you keep letting stuff like that happen and nobody addresses the issue, now you got somebody that shot up because they have been molesting somebody and they've been holding it in and they had nobody to talk to and tell them what was going on in their life. Absolutely. we got to be Absolutely. more responsible. I am going to give out some resources before we go because I don't want to forget. You know this is a show about resources. I want to be available to everyone who needs them. Um, free legal advice in the state of Maryland. Maryland. Maryland Legal Aid provides a full range of free civil legal services to financially qualified. That means if you're unemployed or underemployed, if you don't make a lot of money, there are free legal services available for you, whether it's consumer rights, elder rights, employment, family, farm workers, government, Whatever the problem may be, there are criminal, whatever, there are free legal help for you if you are unemployed or underemployed. Um, You can go to the website, which is MarylandLegalAid.com. The telephone number is, I wrote it down, but where did I put it? Ah, District Court Self-Help Resource Centers. 410-260-1392. So if you need free legal advice, you can go to the website, which is Maryland Legal Aid, or you can call District Court Self-Help Resource Centers, 410-260-1392. We only have minutes left. Keisha, I want to thank you so, so, so much for a grant to be on the show. Thank you for all your advice. Thank you for all your suggestions. Thank you for your resources. Thank you for gracing me with your presence. I am forever <laughs> indebted. If you ever need me for anything, don't hesitate to give your girl a call. Anything you want to say, anything you want to add, anything you want to before we end the show? No, I just want to thank you for having me um, on the show, getting out a few words about you know, these youth of Baltimore, um, ways mm-hmm. to help the youth. Like I said, contact these um these health insurance providers about mm-hmm. services for these kids. Um because mm-hmm. that 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 goes you know, a lot a of friends life. don't know about mm-hmm. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So thank you so much again. I appreciate it. And for anyone who needs travel service assistance and for anybody who wants their favorite hat their favorite scarf and gloves that crochet well 
We I can't even say the weather is over because it just snowed yesterday. The first day of spring, oh. it's cold as hell outside. Well, I can't say oh, cold as hell. That's the oxymoron. I make bikinis and bathing suits as well. I'm working what? all year. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. And how can people get in touch with you? Email address or phone number, whatever you want. Um, email address is Shanair, S-H-A-N-A-I-R-7-7 at MSN.com. Um, the work phone number is 443-392-1903. That's my business line. All right, all right, all right. Thank you so much, Keisha, for gracing me. I really appreciate you. We will be hooking up soon. I will do my best to try to attend more events, I promise. Um, so that <laughs> yes, we can... please come out. I know, I know. Be, I'm we trying. will be having we will be um having a few happy hours, a few events that's raising money for our students as alumni. We need to stay stay active with our school. So we're trying to raise money for our students. We are just starting up a new committee, City Helping City. Um that's for the class that's through the class of nineteen ninety five. So you definitely gotta start coming out 'cause All right. basically you I am, I am. I'm on it. I eat. <laughs> All right. I'm on it. I'm on it. Thank you guys for listening. This has been Make Me Feel It Radio with your host, Stacey. I'm here every Sunday from 7 to 9. Remember, next Sunday is going to be your inspirational vitamin. We'll see you next Sunday from 7 to 9. Thanks again, Keisha. You've been great. I will see you guys next week. Make Me Feel It Radio.